Good day! Here are the top stories of the Manila Times for Friday, October 23, 2020. Several justices and judges deplored the harsh punishment meted out to a Court of Appeals magistrate for inefficiency while Supreme Court Justice Marvick got away even if he had been sleeping on the job. The judicial officials, who asked that they remain anonymous, refer to the case of Justice Marilyn Lagurayak, who the Supreme Court found guilty of gross inefficiency and fined an amount equivalent to one year of her salary. They said that while severely penalizing Yap, the Supreme Court appears to be treating Leonin with kid gloves. In the one-page document that listed pending cases of the 15 Supreme Court justices, Leonin leads with 82 cases. The Presidential Anti-Corruption Commission urged Congress to ensure transparency and accountability in passing the proposed 2021 national budget. PACC Chairman Dante Jimenez said in a statement the Commission wants a corruption-free national budget so that members or employees of the executive branch of government will not be allowed to be used by politicians in their respective places in all regions of the country. Presidential spokesman Harry Roque Jr. said on Thursday, it was all right for actress Liza Soberano and Miss Universe 2018 Catriona Gray to take up an advocacy as long as they do not play into the communists' hands. Roque gave the advice to Soberano and Gray after Army Major General Antonio Parlade Jr. came under a barrage of criticism for wanting the two to rethink their ties with left-leaning groups. Roque defended Parlade, saying he only wanted to protect the two from the communists. A full version of this statement by Parlade can be found in our opinion section. Pope Francis became the first pontiff to endorse same-sex civil unions in comments for a documentary that premiered on Wednesday or Thursday in Manila, sparking cheers from gay Catholics and demands for clarification from conservatives. The papal thumbs up came midway through the feature-length documentary Francesco, which premiered at the Rome Film Festival. The film, which features fresh interviews with the Pope, delves into issues Francis cares about most, including the environment, poverty, migration, racial and income inequality, and the people most affected by discrimination. In world news, United States President Donald Trump and Democratic challenger Joe Biden are set to square off in their final debate on Thursday or Friday in Manila one of the last high-profile opportunities for the trailing incumbent to change the trajectory of an increasingly contentious campaign. Worried about losing the White House, some advisors are urging Trump to trade his aggressive demeanor from the first debate for a lower-key style that puts Biden more squarely in the spotlight. Biden, who has stepped off the campaign trail in favor of debate preparations, expects Trump to get intensely personal. The former vice president and his inner circle sees the president's approach chiefly as an effort to distract from the coronavirus, its economic fallout, and other crises. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's minority liberal government survived an unusual confidence vote on Wednesday or Thursday in Manila, with the support of a small leftist opposition party staving off snap elections. It was a second vote of confidence masterminded by the government this month. Trudeau had been under fire over his government's coronavirus disease 2019 or COVID-19 spending, described as one party leader as a witch hunt against the Trudeau family, and denounced by the Liberals as partisan inquisition. Back in the Philippines, in business, the Banco Central ng Pilipinas is not keen on issuing its own digital currency anytime soon, as it needs to be studied further, its chief said on Thursday. In a virtual briefing, BSP Governor Benjamin Diokno told reporters that the Banco Central releasing a central bank digital currency or CBDC was unlikely within the next five years. A CBDC is a digital form of central bank money that is denominated in a national unit of account and functions as both a medium of exchange and a store of value. Topping sports news, the Tampa Bay Rays held off the Los Angeles Dodgers 6-4 on Wednesday night or Thursday in Manila to square the World Series at one game apiece in Texas. It will be a battle of two right-handers in Game 3 as LA starts Walker Buller opposite Tampa Bay's Charlie Morton. In the PBA, the NLEX Roadwires will face a surging Meralco Bolts in the 4 p.m. opening game today at the Angeles University Foundation Sports Arena and Cultural Center in Angeles, Pampanga. 
After three losses, the Road Wires notched their first win against the Northport Batang Kier 102-88 last Wednesday behind a resurgent Kiefer Ravenna and Kevin Alas, who scored 25 and 16 points respectively. The Bolts, who are 2-2 two and two in the standings, we look to Chris Newsom, Basir Amir, sophomore Travis Jackson, and rookie Aaron Black to deliver. Rigoberto Tiglao is the Times' featured columnist on the front page. He criticizes Leonen for mocking the country's democratic system by sitting on candidate Ferdinand Marcos Jr.'s election protest against Vice President Maria Leonor Rebredo. The Times editorial revisits the 30th Southeast Asian Games and the questionable role that former Speaker Alan Peter Cayetano and his Philippine Southeast Asian Games Organizing Committee, or FISCOC, played in the management of the Games. It says now is the time for Ombudsman Samuel Martirez to investigate whether Cayetano's acts as FISCOC chairman, which include negotiating contracts with various government agencies and the handling of the finances, of the 30th Sea Games violated the code of conduct and ethical standards for public officials and employees. Read the full version of the editorial on the Times Opinion section or listen to The Voice of the Times. For more news and information, get a copy of the Manila Times on print, subscribe to its digital edition, or log on to www.manilatimes.net. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and keep up with the Times.